trailhead and for today's painting adventure I just set up right at the trailhead parking lot overlooking just a really beautiful hillside with distant mountains and big beautiful clouds and basically right at the start of the Munns Wagon Trail which is a lovely trail. Today I wanted to focus on more of a sky painting and capturing these big voluminous clouds um, with a lot of shadow in the base of the cloud. Uh, they're very fleeting so there were some big shapes that I started out with and it kind of um, got broken apart and came back together throughout the painting session but I was able to kind of work with that as well as the uh, foreground and the background cliffs that were dipping in and out of these really beautiful shadows. So we're going to go over how to capture that fleeting light in a very um, quick gestural manner and a little bit of mixing greens and blues and a lot of the grays that you'll see in the clouds. I ended up um, going back and forth a lot between my cloud and sky mixtures and in my landscape mixture so it feels like a very harmonious painting it has a really nice key to it so thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoy this video click the like button if you did enjoy it and hope that you will subscribe to my channel thanks and see you next time so I'm starting off with a 9 by 12 panel that is horizontal and I've got a cadmium orange that I'm using just to stain the panel here. And then I've wiped it down as per usual. Now I'm taking an alizarin crimson plus a little bit of ultramarine blue and just laying in a really quick sketch with my alizarin crimson. And you can see that the, my major shapes here are um, the big clouds in the sky and those distant cliffs and then the rolling hills in the foreground. Um, so super simple and I'm kind of looking outside of the frame a little higher up at uh, this bigger cloud that adds a lot of depth and perspective. So. Um, now I'm gonna just show you really quickly my mother color, which is cadmium uh, yellow medium and alizarin crimson. So I'm gonna be pulling all of my mixtures um, from this one. So you can see I've got my cloud um, dark and light, and I just took a little bit of ultramarine blue and added that to this mother mixture. And you can see I'm blocking in more of the shadow kind of thinly uh, or the you know the darker values and what I can do from there is add my midtones and my lights and then just kind of blend them into each other and continue to tweak them as the clouds you know shift a little throughout the painting and just make them look more voluminous and natural another thing I wanted to say about this um, you know, thing that I love about painting is, um, you know, with our color palette, we have these sort of mixtures that we continue to pull from. And what that allows us to do is really uh, create harmony within, um, within the scene. And when you're harmonizing, um, you know, you've essentially got a little bit of the same color mixture moving throughout all the color mixtures and it really just brings me back to the oneness of life and just sort of how you know we exist in everything and everything exists within us so wanted to share a little bit of a more spiritual elevated consciousness um, insight that I have and you know why I love painting and and why I love tying, um, you know, these ways that I see the world into the actual act of painting itself. And you can see that um, there's a warm and a cool spectrum to this gray. I can continue to add a little more of that mother mixture, 
a little more alizarin or a little more cadmium yellow depending on if it's a cool um, warm or more of like a, a, a warm warm or if it's more neutral and I can also you know drag in more of that blue um, for the base of the clouds and the clouds that are closer to the horizon where there's a bit more of that atmosphere going on and um, that's a really great way to create grays as well. Um, so orange and blue are essentially complementary colors. And when you mix the complements together, you always, and a little bit of white, you always get a really nice gray or brown, depending on you know, how much warm or cool you put into it. And now you can see just sort of faintly in the distance that there is that um, shadow from the clouds being casted over those cliffs and I'm just you know really interested in perhaps extending that all the way across um, and I've taken my um, mother color and I've added a lot more ultramarine blue so that is probably going to be my uh, darkest value of the painting and uh, now I'm going into the sky and just going to add this gradient of um, the more cerulean blue uh, Kind of a little bit of ultramarine Being mixed into it a little bit and then as I drop that down adding more titanium white and using this sky to carve out the clouds a little bit and make them integrate into the sky in a more naturalistic way and you can also tell that the clouds are kind of breaking up a little as they move past so i'm enjoying you know telling that story a little bit of what's happening with this uh, major cloud shape and Honestly, I think that throughout the painting, I end up, you know, overworking the cloud. I think when I first started, I had this really fresh, uh, direct quality. And as a planar artist, you really have to figure out when you want to leave something alone and when it feels like it needs more rendering. So it's important to always kind of take a step back and um, kind of assess the painting after you block in something major and try to attempt to make those positions of, you know, especially when you've got this fleeting element that you're capturing. But it's all a part of the journey and it's a part of the fun. Um, so I am, you know, continuing to tweak the sky and I've decided to drop that cloud shadow over the entire cliffside just to add some drama for better or for worse uh, and I've enlarged that a little bit just to make you feel like you're more at the edge of this rolling hillside and kind of more of at the foot of these big features that drop off into the horizon and I'm continuing to figure out that sky color towards the top of the painting. I like when elements of the painting, you know, continue off the edge. It adds to this expansive quality and you really get a sense of the infinite um, and you kind of capture this panoramic feeling even though you're working at more of a rectangular, two-dimensional scale. So I like that clouds can just feel so all-encompassing. And that's something that I always am looking to recreate in these paintings that are more focused on skyscapes. And I think really successful skyscape paintings have that feeling. And I'm continuing to model these clouds here I'm starting to add more highlights now that I've added a lot of my darker and mid-tones and that's generally something that you want to do um, 
in plein air painting is, you know, not really put down your major highlights until you're sure that that's where they want to go and you, you want to build it up a little before you put down your lightest lights because it's really hard to get it, get it back after that. Another tip that I have that um, I've seen a lot of artists do in their paintings um, and you know something that my own mentor does is kind of outlining the shapes that feel maybe a little more undefined in space. Um, you can do that with the clouds to indicate to where they're overlapping or meeting the sky. Obviously not everywhere, but it can really help to make the shapes very clear when you add a little bit of that outline. So you can see on the cloud that I just modeled, I took a little bit of that darker gray and just outlined the top of it um, and made sure to kind of blend it a little into the sky behind it. So you can really barely tell that it's there. Sometimes, you know, where the cliff edge is or where um, a tree meets the landscape, I'll really just kind of um, exaggerate that contour line around the top of the shapes to separate them a little bit. And I'll go back and forth to clean that up. And, you know, it's not about outlining things. It's just about adding that little extra um, indication of shape sometimes that really helps to set things off. And I love where there's these grays that almost match the color of the sky. It creates a very kind of ethereal, um, atmospheric feeling. So you can see where I've done a little bit of that towards the top. Now I'm moving into my ground plane here and you can see that it continues to go in and out of shadow. So sometimes I'll just paint to buy time for the shadow to fall back into place, or I'll have to paint a little bit from memory, but um, you can see there's not that background um, shadow anymore, but I'm generally blocking in those tree shapes and uh, carving in the ground. Um, and I know from what the light has been doing um, that these trees are going to be in value lighter than that hillside and that there's a lot of light happening in the ground plane. So in mixing my greens here I've taken uh, my kind of orange mixture that I created in the beginning. I've added more red to the background trees um, and then I'm adding a lot more cadmium yellow to more of the foreground trees. And there's these different tiers here as you can see. Now the light is showering this front area and it's kind of back to what it was when I first started so I can more confidently paint in those highlights. I'm going to also just add a little bit of light into that hillside um, because it does feel like I need to break up that dark band a little. So I've added a little bit of titanium white and um, lemon cadmium yellow and cad red light to my uh, cliff color. So that includes everything about today's scene and feeling pretty happy just with the notes that I took on this panel. It may or may not be a finished painting, um, but it was a great adventure and I feel like I was able to learn and share some nice tips. Thanks so much for watching.